Hi everyone, my name is Joe and thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We're excited to welcome you to Brock and the goal of today's webinar is to help you prepare for your upcoming first year as a Badger. We'll cover all the basics that you need to know for course registration, paying your fees, and our summer orientation program, Smart Start. And at any time during this webinar, if you have questions, you can leave them in the chat on the YouTube page, or if you're on the Discover Brock webinar page, you can submit them through the form there. First, let's get started with the basics of course registration at Brock. Course registration will open for all new first-year students on July 13th at 6 a.m. Courses fill up on a first-come, first-served basis, so we recommend that you go online right as registration opens. If you're transferring to Brock from another institution and have been awarded transfer credits, you'll be registering at a later date depending on the number of credits you've received. Two things to make note of this year for online courses are synchronous and asynchronous offerings. Synchronous courses are lectures or secondary course components, such as labs, seminars, tutorials, etc., that are offered at a specific time that students must attend, whereas asynchronous courses are lectures or secondary course components that do not require you to attend at a specific time. And with that out of the way, without further ado, let's run through the process of how to register for your courses. How to register for courses at Brock University. Course registration opens for incoming first year students with no previous credits on July 13th at 6 a.m. Receiving transfer credits? Not a first-year student? You can find your registration date at brocku.ca slash discover slash registration. Registering for your courses requires careful planning. Don't get stuck with 8 a.m. classes every day, unless you're a morning person. Follow these steps to create the best course schedule for you. And before we get started, if you don't feel like sitting through this whole video, make sure you visit brocku.ca slash discover slash registration for all this information and more. Step 1. Review Program Requirements before you can register for anything, you need to know what courses you should be taking. In order to do this, you need to know your program of study, which is located on your offer of admission. With your program in mind, visit the current undergraduate calendar, select your program from the table of contents, and take note of the courses you'll be taking in first year. Confused by context credits? Baffled by electives? Visit brocku.ca slash discover slash glossary to learn more about these terms and others. Step 2. Design your timetable. Now that you've figured out what courses you need to take, you can start plotting out your timetable. You can download printable timesheets to help draft a weekly schedule at brocku.ca slash discover slash registration. Visit the Brock University online timetable to find out when your courses are taking place. Courses marked as D1 are fall winter courses, while D2 courses are just fall and D3 courses are just winter. Don't forget, many lectures are accompanied by a seminar, lab, or tutorial, so be sure to include all components in your schedule. Something new to make note of when reviewing the timetable is whether your courses are synchronous or asynchronous. You can find that information in the location section on the timetable. Synchronous courses have a set time when students are expected to attend. It may be just for the lecture, just the seminar, or each course component could require you to participate at a set time. The instructor will inform you of specific expectations via the syllabus at the beginning of the term. Asynchronous courses do not require that you attend at a specific time, but will still have deadlines that you will need to adhere to. Make sure you set reminders for yourself to complete all coursework on time. Just a reminder that course conflicts are not allowed without permission of both instructors. When looking at an asynchronous course, you may be wondering why it still has a specified time. This is to allow the instructor the option of using the time as office hours or a meet time if needed. Instructors may or may not choose to use the time set. Step 3. Log in to my.brocky.ca and register for your courses. It's July 13th at 6 a.m. and you're an incoming first-year student with no previous credits. It's go time. But let's step back a few days. When the system opens for course registration, you'll need to log into my.rocky.ca with your campus ID and password. If you don't remember your campus ID, you can find it on your offer letter. If you've logged into my.rocky.ca before but can't remember your password, you can reset it by clicking on the Account Activation and Reset Password link on my.rocky.ca and then clicking on the Reset Password link under Faculty, Staff, and Current Students. If you have never logged into my.brocky.ca, you need to activate your account. Click on the Account Activation and Reset Password link on my.brocky.ca, and then click on the Activate Account link under Applicants, New, or Returning Students, and Alumni. It's extremely important that your my.brocky.ca account has been activated at least 24 hours before the system opens. Back to July 13th. When you visit my.brocky.ca to register for your courses, you'll first be entered into a queue. Once you reach the front of the line, you'll have the ability to log in and start registering. Once you're logged in, you'll need to complete your financial responsibility agreement and then register for courses. 
But where do you go? Don't worry. All you need to do is click on the register link on the left hand side, select the correct session, complete your declaration form and you can get started. To register for a course, type in the course name and course number and click go to view available course offerings. The plus symbol next to the course name and number indicates that there is a secondary component, such as a seminar, tutorial or lab. Click the plus sign to view available options. Once you've added your courses and their secondary components, you're done. As soon as you click to add a course, it's been added to your schedule. Having an issue adding a required course for your degree? Some courses are required for multiple degrees, but only open to some degrees on the first day of registration. Visit brocku.ca slash discover slash registration slash FAQs for more information. Once you're done, you can check for any conflicts by clicking on the student schedule button. And you're done. You've registered for your courses. Great job. If you have any questions, you can contact our office by email and make sure that you refer to brocku.ca slash discover for more information on course registration. Alright, and just a quick note for those of you who are transferring from another academic institution to Brock and have been awarded transfer credits. You can easily access your advanced standing or transfer credit statement through the Brock portal. Simply log on to your student portal at my.brocky.ca and on the student self-serve tab, click on the transfer credits link. You'll then see a listing of all credits that were transferred over and can be used towards your new degree at Brock. We recommend that you contact an academic advisor for your program of study so that they can help develop a program plan with you for a course registration. And now on to another important next step, learning how to pay your fees. How to pay your fees at Brock University. All financial statements and fees for Brock University can be accessed online through your my.brocky.ca student portal. If you're waiting for a paper statement, it's not coming. Brock does not mail paper statements. Starting in mid-July, you can access your student financial history to see how much you owe for tuition, ancillary, and other fees, such as residence fees, meal plans, material fees, etc. You need to check this page every time you make a change to your registration because the amount you owe can change. To access your student financial history, log into my.brocky.ca and on the Student Self-Serve tab, click Student Financial History. If you have a current balance outstanding, you may click on the blue Payment Options button for a student fee statement, which lists your outstanding balance, applicable due date, and payment options. Please note, if your finance history has a blue line indicating changes pending, your account has not yet been updated to reflect your most recent registration change. Please check back again after one to two business days to review your updated balance. To make payments to Brock University, there are a number of options. For domestic students, you can pay via internet, phone, or ATM at a Canadian bank or credit union, which takes approximately two business days. You can pay in person at a Canadian bank or credit union, which takes approximately five business days. You can cash in your Aeroplan points through higheredpoints.com, which usually takes about 14 business days. Or you can mail a check to Brock University, which can take 10 or more business days. Please note, Brock University does not accept cash payments. For international students, you have two options. You can use the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce International Student Payment Service, or you can make any payments to Brock University through Western Union Global Pay. This is not a Western Union kiosk, but rather a bank-to-bank -bank wire transfer. Fill out the quote and take it to your bank. For more information on the methods of payment at Brock, you can visit our website. Make sure you keep on top of your deadlines. Students are financially responsible for all tuition and related fees associated with registered courses. To avoid interest, service charges, and other consequences, be sure that you allow sufficient time for your payment to reach us. Interest and service charges will not be waived for late payment. If you have any questions, you can contact us by email, phone, or visit our website. Alright, and last but not least is our great summer orientation program, Smart Start. The goal of this program is to help you make a seamless transition to Brock by covering a wide range of topics that will get you ready for when classes start in September. We've taken all the content from our traditional in-person offering and are making it accessible to the entire Brock community this summer with informational videos and ways to interact with our own students and campus partners online. Let's learn more about Smart Start with this year's team leads, Ashley and Liam. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley and I'm going into my sixth year of concurrent education program in the intermediate senior stream with my first one I'm from Stony Creek. Smart Start is a great way to get to know more about what Brock has to offer both inside and outside of the classroom for students. 
Through the presentations developed by our team, you have a chance to learn about all of the services that will be available to you during your first year and beyond. In addition, you can have your class schedule reviewed over the summer and have a chance to meet with our team who's here to answer all of your questions that you may have before school starts in the fall. We cannot wait to see you this summer. Hi everyone, my name is Liam. I'm going into my third year of the Sport Management Program and I'm originally from Stellarton, Nova Scotia. I was in your shoes not too long ago and I found something that really helped ease my transition into Brock was the Smart Start Program. Smart Start gives you a great opportunity to get your class schedule reviewed, watch informative and genuine presentations, and interact with current Brock students. For me, it provided a great opportunity to get all of my questions answered, and I found it very valuable to listen to the people who had gone through the same process as myself not too long ago. Be sure to register and keep checking the Smart Start site throughout the summer for additional content and opportunities to enter contests and win prizes. Hope to see you soon. Thank you, Ashley and Liam. And now it's time for our Q&A session. We'll now take a break for a few minutes to collect your questions, and we'll come back with answers for you. Stay tuned. All right, and we are back, and we're going to do our best to get to all of these questions. I know you have a lot of questions. I'm seeing them pop up in the chat here. Uh, we're going to answer a, a few of the ones that we got early, and then we're going to take another break, and we'll come back and try and answer the, answer the rest of them for you. Um, so the first question we have, and we got this from a number of different people, is where can I find a listing of the courses that will be offered this fall and winter? Uh, so I've put the URL up on the screen there. So it's brocku.ca slash guides dash and dash timetables slash timetables. Uh, you can also access that from the registration site that we have put together on Discover Brock, uh, discover, or brocku.ca slash discover slash registration. There's a link to the year one timetable there. Um, at present, the timetable is not up, but the goal is to have that up today, uh, later today. Uh, we're doing our best to get that all online for you. Um, so check back again shortly and we'll try and get that all available for you as soon as we can, but the goal is to have it up online today. Okay, so another question that we got is, how should I organize my schedule if I have both synchronous and asynchronous courses that I need to take? So it's always best to structure your schedule around synchronous courses or components since they are less flexible, and then add your asynchronous courses so that there's no conflicts in your schedule. So basically, anything that has a date and time, you want to book, or you want to put those in your schedule, and then anything that is asynchronous or, or doesn't have a date and time, you can add those after because it'll make putting your schedule together a little bit easier. Okay, the next question we have is, when will my student account show the fees that I owe? So typically you'll be able to see your tuition fees in your store, excuse me, your student portal within 24 to 48 hours of registering for your courses. So on July 13th, when course registration opens at 6 a.m., you'll register for your courses and then typically within a day or two, on your student financial history, you'll be able to see the uh, tuition fees um, on that page there. Okay, so another question we have is, where can I find out the status of my residence application? So our residence team is working diligently with our local public health office to find out what safe options we'll be able to offer you this fall and beyond. Please continue to check both your personal email and Brock email addresses over the coming weeks, as we'll be sharing important updates with you as they become available. <clears throat> excuse me, as they become available. Okay, how will scholarships be applied towards my tuition? So towards the end of the summer, you'll be able to see the scholarships being added to your student portal, meaning that they will be automatically applied and will help lower the cost of your tuition and other fees. Okay, so that's the first batch of questions that we have there. Uh, we have a, a number of additional questions, so we're going to take another quick break, get those put together, and come back with some answers for you. So thanks for much, thank, excuse me, thanks so much for sticking around and we'll be back with you shortly.
All right, we are back and we're going to do our best to get to as many questions as we can. Um, so the first question that we got is, if I mistake, if I make a mistake during course registration, am I able to change my schedule? The answer to that is yes, you can easily drop and re-add courses as long as they're not at capacity. If it is a required course for your major, please reach out to the academic advisor for your program and they're usually able to provide an override to allow you to register for the course. The next question we got is, how do I register for Smart Start? So you can go to brocku.ca slash start to register for it. And you can do that at any time before the program starts. During the program, it's going to be available all summer. And we're going to have lots of um, different, uh, different things available for you on there that you can get at any time to help you with your transition to Brock. Okay, the next question we have is, where can we see if courses will be offered online or in person? So when you're in the timetable, if the location is listed as synchronous or asynchronous, it will be offered online. And you'll be able to note all of the possible locations for courses once the timetable is live. And once again, going back to our point from before, the timetable should be going live today. And that will hopefully answer a lot of the questions that we're getting here, because um, you'll be able to see what courses are available and when you will be able to um, when you'll be taking them in the fall and winter. Okay, the next question we have is where can I find a list of electives? So the best resource is to go to our registration FAQs page, which is brocku.ca slash discover slash registration slash FAQs. And from there, there is a link to more information about electives and uh, you can find out what you need. But generally for electives, you'll be taking, or you can take any course that is a first year course that has no prerequisites that are required. Um, so when you're looking through the timetable, if something has no prerequisites and it's a first year course, you generally can take that as an elective. Okay, another question we have is where can I find an academic advisor to reach out to? So if you go to brocku.ca slash academic advising, you'll be able to find general and program specific advisors there. Okay, so we have a ton of questions. We're going to do our best to answer all of them. Um, if you have more questions about registration, we have put together a very handy FAQs page at brocky.ca slash discover slash registration slash FAQs, which gets into some of the nitty gritties about um, programs in different faculties and specific programs as well. If you didn't get your question answered, um, please fill out the form on our webinar page. It's at brocky.ca slash discover slash webinar. When we receive your question, we will get back to you and get you an answer as soon as we can. Um, but that's all the questions and answers that we're going to be getting to from this webinar. But again, if you go to that website and fill out that form there, we will get an answer to you as soon as we can. Uh, if you haven't gotten your question answered in the YouTube chat, please put it there as well because we aren't really able to contact you through YouTube, but we can contact you via email. So I appreciate all of you coming out for this webinar. Make sure that you register for Smart Start, as I mentioned before, at brocku.ca slash start. That's our summer long academic um, transition program that will help you get ready for the fall. And uh, make sure you refer to discover brock at brocku.ca slash discover, and then also brocku.ca slash discover slash registration for more information about course registration. And uh, good luck on July 13th at 6 a.m. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing all of you at Brock in the fall. Um, digitally. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much and uh, have a great day.